is Ashish and uh, so this is going to be a workshop as you know uh, we're going to talk about the three signature drinks that we have for this festival and uh, we're using the festival blend as the base for all our signature drinks. One of them is going to be a cold drink and two are going to be hot drinks right and uh, like with everything at the flying squirrel we're trying to use as much uh, or everything natural so none of our syrups are really bought or whatever but uh, and why I'm saying that is but if you don't or, una or are unable to do this at home then you can choose to buy a ready-made caramel syrup or ready-made chicky from the store or whatever but as of now we have created all of this on our own and uh, I'll briefly explain how each of these are done and then so first I'd like you to taste uh, this harvest festival blend okay and then I'll tell you why we chose to do whatever we did why we chose to do whatever we did in terms of our signature drinks so again if you're not a regular coffee drinker it's it's black coffee okay so it's cold brewed coffee which means it's not as acidic as hot brewed coffee uh, we just steep the coffee grounds in cold water for about 14 hours and the coffee soluble coffee content slowly leaches into the water but without any pressure or without any heat so which means a lot of the acids the chlorogenic acids etc are not getting into the water okay so cold brewed coffee is normally a sweeter kind of coffee it's much more delicate much more gentle and it gives you a nice clean cup of coffee right so when you taste this coffee and i'm going to do so myself please you want to just jump in if you can just tell me what kind of what kind of tastes what kind of flavors are you getting just just off the top bitter yeah i mean there's chocolate okay huh nutty okay earthy flavor okay print of chocolate okay so uh, i know there is that obvious coffee bitterness but for example if i give you an espresso shot and ask you to taste i know that's that's what bitter coffee is but there is a lot of sweetness natural sweetness in this coffee right we've not added sugar but you can really taste that very natural sweetness in this coffee and also when we did the cupping initially when we created this blend we felt a lot of jamminess a nice fruity jamminess that was there in the cup okay so that's where we started with our recipes we said if this harvest blend is about a sweet nice jammy sort of and and like you said there's a slight nuttiness to the coffee etc things like chocolate and all are actually prevalent across all coffees all coffees will have caramel chocolate some are more pronounced some are less pronounced etc right so we said if this is a nice slightly fruity jammy kind of a coffee what can we do with it and therefore we said let's do uh, again where is Vasan? okay so uh, working with the rest of our team etc we said let's do three kinds of coffees one let's make it nice and even more fruity and nice and summery and nice and cool so we said let's create a sangria a coffee sangria right so using the cold brew then we said let's do something that accentuates that jammy fruitiness so we said let's use dry fruit so therefore we created something called the baklava coffee it has dry fruit and spice in it and the third thing we said is it's nice and fruity but let's create something unique from an Indian kind of a taste profile etc and so therefore we created this thing called the chicky latte okay so these are three coffees that we are going to quickly go through what we'll do is we'll start with the sangria okay we'll start with the sangria because that takes about an hour to actually uh, steep it actually takes about three hours to steep but we'll we'll start with that and then we'll move on to the other thing and then we can taste all three so for the sangria what we're going to use is we're going to put about 30 ml of simple syrup okay simple syrup is sugar syrup but it's not the gulab jamun kind of sugar syrup it's probably about twice the looseness of the gulab jamun kind of syrup it's more watery so we're going to put about 30 ml you can see the it's not too thick right so about 30 ml of this simple syrup okay it's got a little sweeter yeah and anytime if you want to pick an ingredient and just taste it just so that you know what it is please go ahead I'll keep a lot more spoons so if you want to taste the syrup to know exactly what the consistency of it is if you want to taste this taste it, just go ahead and pick it right so take a spoon try it we're going to put a little bit of the fruit 
This is orange. You could use mandarin. Try and do something that's sweeter, but has a nice clean zest, right? So if you get an orange that is green, your zest is going to be a little bitter because that zest is adding flavor to the coffee, to the drink, right? So nice, nice clean zest. A uh, nice ripe fruit is good. So we're going to put for this for this glass. I'm going to put about this much of uh, thing. Freshly cut fruit. Okay. Uh, we cut this when we thought we would start, but because it got a slightly delayed, it's got a little oxidized. But freshly cut apple. Right. And just a touch of lime juice. So again, this is freshly squeezed lime juice. Do not use do not use a bottle lime juice, etc., because that's got some off notes. Just a little. So what I'm going to try and do is create a nice balance here itself, right? Because the coffee is only going to lace this and add more flavor to this, right? But it's not going to be part of this drink. So I'm going to create a nice balance. So what do I have? I have sweetness, I have slight bitterness, and I have sourness. So all these three flavors should actually balance each other right now, okay? So once I have this, I'm going to like gently muddle it. Not too much. You don't want to create a paste. You just want to get a little bit of those oils out of the zest into the drink. But you want to try and keep the fruit as intact as possible, right? I get at any point if you want to taste what this tastes like now, please grab a spoon and go. Yeah. Just get a little more soundness. Is it too sweet? Yeah. There you go. So that's total of two teaspoons of lime. Okay. Okay. Right. So now you've got some sort of balance, there's sweet, bitter and sour, that's nice, fairly well balanced. And then all you got to do is add the cold brew coffee, right? Now like we explained to some yesterday, cold brew coffee is coffee powder, ground costly and kept in cold water for about 14 hours. There is no hot water added to it, there's no heat processing, there's no pressure, nothing. It just gently leaches into the water, the coffee solids. Cold brew is very high in caffeine as well. The highest form of caffeine coffee is cold brew coffee, right? So you're just going to add this. Remember not to muddle it up. Give it a light stir and that's it. Okay? Nothing else. Once you've added the fruit, don't go to mess it up. Yeah, that's kept for three hours. So what's happening is the flavor of the fruit has to just leach and not force its way into the water. It just has to slowly leach into the water. And that's what we attempt. So every morning we do this. Actually the previous night we do this and put it in the fridge. So the morning is nice and perfect, right? And it usually is over by the end of the day and the next day we do a new batch. And if it's not over, then all of us drink a lot of sangria before we go home, right? Yeah, you could, you could add a little bit of, lace it with a little bit of alcohol for sure. But I feel then you might have to up the sweetness a little bit, but yeah, try it out. Wine or? No, then it becomes a regular uh, sangha. White spirit. So, white spirit. Yeah, maybe a white spirit should work. Okay. Right, we leave that aside. The next thing we're going to do is, uh, I get a drink that's become really popular over the last couple of days, apart from the sangria and the baklava, is the cashew chicky latte. Okay. So, uh, now we've made the chicky on our own, okay, which is basically you take sugar and you caramelize it. That's the simplest thing to do, right? And there's some basic rules about caramelization, which is you add a little bit of water so that you start the melting process and then the sugar sort of burns evenly rather than a lot of people what they do is they just put the dry sugar grains on a hot pan and they wait for that to melt. So what's happening, the bottom is getting burnt while the top is still hard sugar, right? So add a little bit of water, just a little bit of water to melt it all around and then you just watch that beautiful liquid turning brown together, right? So that's how you make the base and just throw in some cash. Come, throw in some, this is Vasant. He's also the barista here. 
uh, and then throw in some cashew right to this let the cashew cook for just a little bit right so just a little bit of roasting has to happen with the cashew and then take it off the fire and then pour it out onto a grease sheet or a steel plate or whatever and then just crush it around so that's how you make the chicki anybody wants to taste there's a little bit of cardamom if you want to just pick the other really great thing to do would be to buy it from a store right so you just pick up chicki from the store and just smash it around sorry okay. yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to prep the cup first okay now this is caramel syrup which again we have made here it's like a caramel toffee syrup you get this hershey's caramel sauce could be a good substitute for it but an even better thing to do is make it at home again which is the same you start melting the sugar once it gets brown say for 1 cup of sugar you add 1 cup of fresh cream okay this added it you watch it become all volcanic like and just stir it around and that's what you get it's really easy to make but if you don't want to yeah you could probably buy it so what we're going to do is just and just look at the consistency right so that's the consistency that you're looking at a lot of people uh, a little feedback that they gave us was don't put the caramel here because as you're drinking it sort of gets on to your fingers but you know you can't really avoid that because you're doing this right so it's okay it's nice and messy there's lots of tissue and then what we're going to do is i would probably powder this a little more but Will you make the espresso, please? Yeah. So some of it is going to fall in. That's fine. It adds to the flavor. Yeah. a little bit of the chicki into the thing it will melt gently in, into your hot uh, espresso right and then what we're going to do is we're going to pour in an espresso shot now here we are obviously using the machine but there's multiple ways to make an espresso at home uh, if you have any of these things an aeropress or mocha pot or whatever uh, it's really simple i mean this mocha pot you just add the water at the bottom you put your coffee into this and then you just dunk the whole thing onto a onto the, onto a flame right and then after about a minute you have your espresso shot so this is actually the original espresso machine this is much later right so uh, or you could just brew a really strong cup of coffee so put one spoon of coffee powder put two spoons of water bring it to a boil shut it off filter it and put it into that so multiple ways of doing this right so then uh, Is, yeah so uh, but uh, we we've done the espresso here so i'm going to put a single shot of espresso with a small cup and the milk please and that's your cashew chicki latte the only thing i would do is probably powder this a little more so then it sticks on the right So anyone wants to go ahead and have a taste we we'll all have we'll all make more cups of these So obviously all of us won't have an espresso machine at home where we can pour milk etc So another thing to do is just heat milk up to about 90 92 degrees right not too hot not up to boiling point etc just heat milk a french press this one costs 800 or whatever you get stuff for 300 400 or whatever just put the hot milk in the french press and the milk is again 20 25% no no 3% yeah So obviously this is not going to be as perfect as foaming milk in an espresso machine but it's about uh, 100 the cost this thing as compared to that 
And it sort of does the job, right? So, yeah. So if you don't have an espresso machine at home for, with that steaming wand, it's okay. You can still do something with this. So hot milk into this, just pump it about four or five times, and then you get that. That's not part of the workshop. It's uh, yeah. Will the buttermilk thing at home that also work? Majige. I don't know. Make the get the foam. I don't know. I think this what what happens is the filter keeps like putting smaller little uh, I mean uh, air air drops into the milk. Yeah. So I think that's how it works. Okay, moving on. So now the baklava coffee, baklava latte. Again, it's it's very simple. Uh, the date syrup is something you can make at home or you can buy. But if you're buying, please make sure that the ingredients on the pack just says dates, nothing else. No preservatives, nothing, absolutely nothing. See, the thing about uh, making drinks with coffee is a maximum of two to three other ingredients. I mean, this is something that we follow. We really don't want to overcomplicate the process. We try and make it as simple as possible, right? So just try and hero one other ingredient apart from the coffee, right? So in this case, in the case of this, it is the fruit. And it's a particular kind of fruit. It's a citrusy fruit, right? With a little bit of tannin. In this case, it is a nut. This is the hero. It's a cashew nut and not the caramel that's a hero. Now we're going to do uh, the third one, which is a baklava latte. Very simple again. We're just using three ingredients. We're using the coffee, milk of course. We're using date syrup, which you could make at home or you could buy. And we're using cardamom powder, okay? And nothing else. Cardamom powder? Yeah. So not the entire cardamom, not the skin and everything, but just the little seeds that are inside, you just grind it into a powder, really fine powder, and that's it. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I would start with a pinch of this. Right? And what you want to do is extract maximum flavor out of this. So what we would do is we'd brew the coffee directly onto this. So what's happening, it's already steeping. The cardamom is steeping and infusing into the brew, right? But now we have, uh, it's already brewed, so I'm just gonna pour that as hot as get. If it was hotter, it would have steeped nicely. And when we, we give you our drinks, it'll be done nice and hot, so it'll steep nicely into the pot, right? So you're just gonna wait for a few seconds for the cardamom to infuse into the hot brew. And then we're going to add a couple of teaspoons of date. Now, depending on the consistency of your syrup, you'll have to decide how sweet, because the thicker it is, the sweeter it will be. But for this, I'm going to use... two spoons. One for the spoon. With all that stuck in it. It's about a tablespoon. Yeah, two teaspoons. Okay. <laughs> Just give it a quick stir. For me, the main thing here is that infusion of the cardamom into the hot espresso. Otherwise, what's going to happen is it's going to have a little bit of some cardamom trace or whatever but a lot of that coming on your mouth without really giving the benefit of that flavor so the thing is infuse it nicely let it steep really nicely then you can cool down the liquid by adding the the date syrup don't put the date syrup first yeah I mean, it should have been really hot, piping up. We could garnish with whatever, would you recommend? We could garnish with something, but uh, maybe a little bit of nuts or whatever but that's up to your but the basic flavors are the cardamom the date and a nice espresso